Rockstars guitar aficionados, welcome to another edition of Guitar Sounds. I'm Eric Andreas, your guitar sage. Today, I got the beautiful Brett Papa with me, and we are at Carter Vintage Guitars. If you ever come to Nashville, you gotta check this out. We are going to right now, yes. shall we? Yes, let's do this. Rockstars, Eric Andres here with Brett Papa and Walter Carter, who is the owner of Carter's Guitar here in Nashville, a premier spot for vintage instruments. Uh, Walter, so good to meet you. Thank you so much nice for meet having you. us. Uh, Walter, can you tell us a little bit about Carter's and what makes you guys, what, what makes Carter's Carter's? Why do, do the rock stars, country stars, uh, guitar players of all come here? Well, we've gotten to the point where it's it's not really a joke that we've got one of everything. We're, mm -hmm. we, we've gotten so much inventory. We've been really fortunate. We opened in uh, 2013, and the entire floor space was clear at that time. Yeah. And now it's uh, it's like uh, navigating through a Pac-Man <laughs> to try to get around. Every time I come here, you guys have yeah. a lot more guitars. It's not just a few. It's like a lot more guitars. But just about everything is out where people can play. So mm -hmm. you've got. You know, original 50s and 60s Strats here, original pre-war Martins uh, and Gibsons up here. Um, and it, it's that way all around the store, uh, whether just slightly used or, or really true vintage, uh, everything's there. I mean, the instrument sells itself if, uh, as long as someone can play it. So, indeed, indeed. Uh, we like to have people play them. <laughs> and not just guitars, but you have guitars, mandolins, banjos, you know, about anything with frets on it, a few fretless basses. Yeah. Uh, no, we've got a few weird instruments. Uh, I don't even know what they are. So right. I can't, <laughs> can't exactly tell you. And quite a tasty selection of amps as well. We, the amps keep coming in. Yeah. yeah. We yeah. we intended to have a few amps for tryouts, and then uh, people can oh. You, I didn't know you did amps, and I've got a few. Nice. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, here, I've got a few more. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> nice. And they keep coming. So we've got we've got tons of amps from, uh, you know, a purple Marshall half stack and to some old block logo Marshalls, Tweed mm -hmm. Fenders, uh, pre-war Gibson amps. Mm -hmm. Just about everything you would want in an amp it, with tubes. Not too much solid. Right, right. Indeed, indeed. Thank you for that. Yeah, yeah. What yeah. was a stage where we used to have events right. is now our amp display area. So what do we have here? I remember the last time, yeah. the first time I was here, it was the three really nice amps here, ish. Right. And something <laughs> happened. Well, this was this was our performance stage, and it, it got taken over by amps and. Uh, for a while, we were able to clear the amps off and, and still have performances. And it, it, one of those, we left some marshals on the on the back line because it was banjo. It was old time banjos up front, and they didn't need to plug in. But we got a great review from a guy who said it was the finest back line of marshals for any banjo concert ever. <laughs> <laughs> and we've still got a few nice marshals. There's a uh, over here. Yeah, there's a little purple half stack. There's an offset. Uh, Right there, one of the earliest. Uh, here's a, a two rock that was John Mayer's. Uh, there's a prototype two rock that was made for Mayer that, that it's not one that he got. Uh, there's a blues breaker, some tweed fender amps. Uh, What's little, the story but with the, with the uh, Mayer amp? Uh, there's a guy in town who brought it in, who who bought uh, several early two rocks, including that one, and. At one point, got tired of them, so he he noticed we had a few amps and thought maybe we could sell it. So Beautiful. We did. Uh, there's a Dumbo peeking out from back there. Which one is the Dumbo? Oh, this one the, that's, the, that's a pop. Uh, right, yeah, right. But the one that it looks the like overdrive a deluxe. Yeah, it's a converted. It started as a Fender deluxe. And, and for those that don't know what the Dumbo is, can in a nutshell, can you say why it is that that there's, there's that a, they're so sought there's after? There's a fellow named Alexander Dumbo who makes them one at a time. Uh, he's somewhat eccentric uh, and they've always been high priced and that one at one time was owned by Keith Urban and the price on it I think is uh, $90,000. And wow. that's really not far out of line with, yeah. his, with the ones that he makes new. <laughs> right. Uh, Jackson Brown is uh, was one of the earlier uh, champions of Dumble Amps and uh, we had one uh, that uh, David Lindley owned uh, you know, another famous 
uh, model called the Steel String Singer. And, uh, it was really cool. You could play it and you could sound like Lindley until you actually started playing. But if you just had a lap steel and, and didn't really move, it sounded right. just like Lindley. <laughs> <laughs> I tried it. <laughs> but then when I started playing, it didn't. <laughs> then it sounded like me. I actually made this thing. <laughs> Used to work divided by 13 many, many moons ago. Here it is, one of the first BTR 23s. Sound. <laughs> no, it's actually the same amp I use uh, in a lot of my, my videos, but it's the combo version. And there was an amp called an RSA 23 made for Rusty Anderson back in the day, and they were so loud. And I was telling Fred, I'm like, dude, you gotta put a master volume and a little bit more gain on this thing, and it would be. Amazing. And so the BTR actually stands for, um, I don't know what his middle name is, but it's Brian Ray. So the guy that plays in Paul McCartney's band. It became kind of his signature amp and he used it all over the place on the McCartney World Tours and the whole bit. But anyways, so this is one of the early ones. You can you can tell on the inside, I don't know if you can see it on this one, but my, my old, uh, if, it, if you ever have a divided by 30 to look on the inside, I, anything that has a question mark on the chassis is what I built. <laughs> Why a question mark? And Fred's like, pick a symbol, and I just put a question mark. I, I hope I did it right. <laughs> question mark. This and the light speed. These, if you want just sick, sick overdrives. I love. I did. I did a little um, meet with a guy at the Nam show. Um, a friend recommended me to go check out one of his pedal called the Light Speed, and that's like the lighter overdrive version. But uh, you know me, I like a lot of gain. So this this one was kind of like that on steroids. And his pedals, I went through probably 10 of them at the NAMM show, and they're amazing. Check out the rear amp stuff, it's really, really cool. Cool. Something Dude, that they These did. models, the Grissoms, yeah. are sound really good. You know, Gretsch just has its own, its own stink about it. Uh, the pickups are just have a have a tone about them that's just different than, than anything else. And obviously, the construction of it, you know, being a semi-hollow guitar, and they have the Bigsby tremolo system and what have you. And they just have a real percussive kind of sound that has its own has its own vibe, different from anything else. And Gretsch has always been like that with everything that they do. They've, they do things differently, um, but still classic. So, and 6120, of course, uh, Brian Setzer's favorite instrument. He preferred the, the, actual, the 59 one, which is why I got the 59.
sounds. Sounds. I love sounds. Rock stars, guitar aficionados. <laughs> Rock antic. I'm Eric Andreas, your guitar sage. This is Brett Papa. Hello, sir. Oh, my oh, friend. No. Today we're at Guitar. <laughs> Jesus, we're at Carter. Let's try that again. Here we go. Guitarters? Yeah, guitarters. <laughs> I'm guitarded. <laughs> Here we go.